Octopus is garden by the Beatles. We're having a beets and eat special. We're having yum, we're gonna yum, have savory yum. beets. We're gonna have sweet beets. We're, we're gonna have, have cream soul satisfying songs of last willow. Oh definitely. I'm 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 riding what you're vibing. It's gonna be dairy good funk. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be vibes that make us hungry and fatten your soul. Yeah, right, yeah, right. I'm right, but this is beats and it. So, the reason why we just play Octopus is done is because we have a guest that fits perfectly into the beats and this category. We have Jim in the studio, aka Cherry Moon. So, what does Octopus's Garden have to do with you? Well, um, when I was a little kid, I got a cassette tape for a birthday one year, and um, I used to put it on my little cassette player and um, just dream about Octopus's Garden and I didn't realise it was a really well known Beatles song and um, later down the track in my career becoming a chef working at Tetsu as I um, asked to do a photo shoot and I was on a section at the time um, prepping kilos, tons worth of octopus <laughs> and um, they were like oh okay so for the photo shoot why don't we um, get an octopus entwined in your hair standing in a beautiful doorway with a Japanese dress on. Like a real octopus. Yeah, a real live octopus. Ooh. And they were going to entwine it with tin foil and stuff. But the photographer called me back and said, what if you just stand there with a chef's knife and we have an octopus on your shoulder or something and you're wearing your chef's jacket so it's more, you know, food and not so arty. And, and I was like, oh, okay, all right, I'll do it. And so I went down to the fish markets and there's this guy standing there behind me with an octopus um, uh, holding it up with a broom on my shoulder. <laughs> And um, we got the shot, and then um, it was in the magazine, and it was also in the cover of the newspaper, so it was a double whammy. You are, you're not originally from Australia. You're from New Zealand. What was your first? Um, what was your first cooking job? And why? What was like the mentality you were before you entered into the job? Like, <laughs> where, where were you? Yeah, like was it was it you picked up a pan and immediately you were kind of drawn to, to cooking, or was it kind of a slow a slow cook? Well, to tell you the truth, guys, I was a naughty little shit. <laughs> I was uh, mixed up with the wrong crowd, and I just had so much energy. I needed to yeah. pour it into something productive, but I went a bit off the rails, and um, I felt a bit misunderstood in my family, and things started to get a bit out of hand. Um, so eventually, leading to a tragedy, which right. I now see as a blessing within my family, and it just made me wake up and um, start to channel my energy. On your tongue. Taste on your tongue. What I'm doing here is I'm just um, blending up some chili in a mortar and pestle. And um, the, the reason why I'm putting that in first is because I just want to be able to gauge the amount of heat that I'm getting into the sauce. Then a little pinch of garlic. Fish a lot. I can go back and add a bit more chili and garlic if I need it. You never want that to be overpowering right from the beginning. No you, you should read a certain, um, because this, uh, Kim, on top of the trend at the moment, Kim had a, had a little bit of an interview. Oh, and, uh, that's so. Yeah. And they also <laughs> were, they said, what is the future of the like future trends of food? Right? The next big thing, I see that you said back, this is a while ago now, you yes. said organic produce. Mm -hmm. Flavors are so lovely in the oven, it's up to your creativity to do the rest. I reckon that's probably pretty pretty correct. Ten years ago, like well not ten, but you know, a while ago, organic foods all over, all the rage. Yeah. Would you do have that same answer now? Yeah, I would. And, and I, that's the thing. When I was twenty one, and they asked me to fill out all these questions, signature dish cup as part of the job, next big thing, advice for an aspiring chef. Like I was like, I don't even know how to answer these. I'm twenty one, and I'm, <laughs> yeah. like you know, competing up against all. Well, well it wasn't a competition, but you know, uh, in this magazine with all these other amazing chefs. More and, um, chefs. <laughs> yeah, and I just, like, I was like, I've just got to keep it real. Like, this is where my heart and soul is with cooking, and it is up to you. Like, I do feel that creativity comes through you when you're in a really good state of mind. <laughs> Yeah. 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 yeah, we're there. Yeah.
it's balanced. Oh, we're going to do it. Sweet yeah. we're gonna play that Yeah, we're going to play that Nut fish sauce. Yeah, The reason why I've prepared that today is because it's um, the, the dressing um, really opened up my world. It's called Nanjim and um, it's all about balancing flavour. So yeah, you want to get your chilli in there so um, you sort of need to a bit of practice with this dressing to sort of gauge how much you're putting in. You do taste it as you go mm. but it's sort of like you can't just taste like the raw chilli garlic initial. <laughs> it's not until you start um, pounding up the palm sugar fish sauce and lime juice that you can start to taste it come together. But it was one of those dressings that I um, you know, uh, got, went to the head chef every single time I made it to get to check mm. that I balanced it properly and then after about three or four months it was like, yeah, I feel com <coughs> com com confident with this um, dressing and it's all about evolving your palate. See, I love that. Three or four months to perfect the right balance of the various ingredients on this dressing. That is some dedication. And I gotta say, I've had, I love Som Tom. It's probably my favorite Thai dish because when I was 16, I went to rural land in Thailand and they serve it all the time. Mind you, the locals, they have it probably about you know 10 times hotter because they love the chili. Yeah. And, but then they'd serve us the, the foreigner one, which has zero chili. So this, this is like... Boring. Well, yeah. I, I went straight up to them in their little um, stalls and said, oh, some Tom Thai, because I ordered it so confidently. They look at me and, and they're hanging out the chilies in their hand. Like, how many others? <laughs> no more. But by the time um, I was leaving Thailand, I was like, yeah, I can eat it how you guys eat it. <laughs> That's the way. You build yourself up, you build a bit of immunity to it, and yeah. um, it brings out the flavor all the more. Mm. Man, so this is it. This is like, and it's, I, I was seeing, you know, you can have a look at our Facebook for the videos we're going to do and stuff. You love it, I I can't stop eating it. I'm just like, yeah, it seems. Um, I seriously, thank you for uh, coming to the studio, honoring us with your story, honoring us with your palate. Thank you guys, thanks so much for having me. I've learned so much from you, thank you. Hang on, out of curiosity, if somebody else wants to try your food and they're listening, where can they go? So I was doing a little pop-up at the co-op every Friday. Yeah. Um, I will be starting that back up again soon. Yes. Um, but yeah, just getting a bit of life balance happening. So it's all about the balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's about the balance. And how do people get in contact, contact with you? Because I know you've got an Instagram view. Yep. Um, underscore Cherry underscore Moon is my Instagram. Mm. I also have a Facebook page. And um, you can email me at Cherry Moon Tart Shop. Gmail.com. Slip easily across your lips. Champagne flute and canopy. Mm -hmm. 